Let me take you to the General Assembly Emergency Special Session at the United Nations on the protection of the Palestinian civilian population. These are live pictures from the United Nations. This is the ambassador to the UN the, uh, for Palestine. Let's listen in. Mr. President, colleagues, let us all remember we are meeting here while Palestinians in Gaza are under the bombs. Remember that you are speaking while families are being killed, while hospitals are coming to a halt, while neighborhoods are being destroyed, while people are fleeing from one place to another with nowhere safe to go. I urge you to choose your words carefully and to act accordingly. For all those mobilized against an even greater man-made humanitarian catastrophe or of a regional spillover, and these are worthy goals, we say, stop the bombs or both will happen. Stop the bombs and save lives, as the President of the General Assembly has indicated. All lives, lives of children, of civilians, of 2.3 million civilians in the Gaza Strip. Mr. President, in Gaza, a father tells his daughter about the birthday he was planning for her and asks her not to miss it. A mother laments, my children died before they had a chance to eat. The thoughts that cross the mind of a mother in the face of such grief, 3,000 children in Gaza were killed by Israel in the last almost three weeks. I repeat, 3,000 children, innocent children, angels, killed in Gaza during the last three weeks. A man embraces his mother and pleads like a child. Come back, I beg you. Come back, and I will take you wherever you want. He hugs her and can let go. But there is no time to mourn. More death is on the way. 1,700 women were killed by Israel in the last two weeks. A young man wrote, we will not leave Gaza. We will only leave Gaza to join the heavens. A few days later, he did. 7,000 Palestinians have been killed by Israel in the last almost three weeks. 70% of all those killed are women and children. Almost all killed are civilians. Is this the war some of you are defending? Let me repeat, is this the war that some of you are defending? Can this war be defended? These are crimes. This is barbarism. If you do, if you do not stop it for all those who were killed, stop it for all those whose lives we can still save. Jinan, a little girl under the rubbles, shouts at the people coming to rescue her. What took you so long? There are 900 Palestinian children under the rubbles, alive or dead, wondering what is taking so long wondering if any help is on the way. 
Anas, a little boy who is known as Anus, crawled from under the rubbles, not to find light, but more darkness. Devastations and death all around him. His ordeal has only started, not ended. 1,600 Palestinians are under the rubbles, and no one can reach them to save them or bury them. A doctor speaks of a term coined during this war, wounded child with no surviving family. 80 Palestinian families have lost 10 or more of their members, sometimes up to 45 members of the same family were killed. 18,000 people are wounded, many treated in hospital hallways, if at all, with no anesthesia. Paramedics who have been, who have seen death time and time again, break down and cry. This time, is just too much. UN staff, humanitarian personnel, and doctors are standing their ground and paying the ultimate price for it. This memory is honored by some as if a natural disaster had killed them not a UN member staff. As hospitals turn into morgues, doctors and patients alike wonder, is help on the way? Is help on the way? They are not listening to the explanations of some leaders on why the war has to go on. They just hear the bombs. They just feel the blast, they just face all this death trying to survive or to honor the pledge they took to save lives with no means to do so. People are ordered to evacuate. They look at their children. Should we head south? Will we be bombed on the way or once there? Should we go to a hospital courtyard, a UN school, a church, a mosque, sleep in our car in the streets? But bombs are everywhere. What choices do you make as a parent when there are only impossible choices, when death is everywhere, devastation is, is everywhere? A man stands in front of his house, turned into rubble yet another time. After a long pause, he asks, how do you bury a house? Israel has destroyed over 40% of all homes, making an entire population homeless and displaced. 1.4 million people in the hope to forcibly transfer them outside the territory. The Israeli foreign minister came to the Security Council and said, this meeting should conclude with a clear message. Bring them home. For millions of Palestinians, there is no home to go back to. For thousands, there is no family left to embrace. Not by an act of God, but by the acts of a government represented here in this chamber. He spoke of families and their pain. There is not a single family in Gaza that has not endured epic suffering. He told you horrible it was to kill civilians just before justifying the killing of Palestinian civilians by the thousands. He spoke of the fear felt by people when rockets are launched, Israeli bombs 
have not spared a single square meter of Gaza. He believes the difference between civilization and barbarism is who is doing the killing or how they do it. He believes the laws of humanity and of our international law-based order apply to others, but not to Israel. That they protect Israeli lives and allow the killing of Palestinians and taking Palestinian lives. He believes Israel can pretend it, it is abiding by the very laws it is breaching live on your TV screens and before your eyes. That if you say Hamas enough times, the world will not be able to object to wiping off the face, from the face of earth entire families, four generations at a time, or to a siege where you let in enough humanitarian aid to pretend you have a sense of humanity, but nowhere enough to address the immense needs that are grow growing exponentially as you keep bombing a besieged territory. He says, release the hostages and takes two million Palestinian hostages. Let me translate these numbers. Compared to the population of Gaza, this is the equivalent of 28,000 Israelis killed, including 12,000 children and 6,800 women, 72,000 wounded, 5.6 million displaced. Is it more shocking now? more unacceptable, more outrageous? Why some feel so much pain for Israelis and so little pain for us, the Palestinians? What is the problem? Do we have the wrong faith? The, the wrong skin color? The wrong nationality? The wrong origin? Let me address all those who have in these past few days explained why one should not call for a ceasefire. How can representatives of states explain how horrible it is that 1,000 Israelis were killed and not feel the same outrage when 1,000 Palestinians are now killed every day? 1,000 Palestinians killed every day. Why not feel a sense of urgency to end their killing? Nothing can justify war crimes, crime against humanity, and genocide. Nothing can justify the killing of a single Palestinian child. Nothing. Nothing at all. Why not feel a sense of urgency to end our killing? Nothing can, as I said, justify war crimes. You are setting us back 80 years by trying to justify what Israel is doing now. How naive one has to be or how hypocritical to pretend they don't know Israel is voluntarily killing Palestinian civilians. Who can believe that those killed by Israel are for 70% children and women and that entire families were killed while Israel is trying to minimize civilian death? They kill all of us, they kill thousands of us, and they say they are trying to minimize killing civilians. How would it look like if they were trying to maximize killing Palestinian civilians? If killing 7,000 is to minimize, killing 700,000 would be possible to maximize? 
We don't need you to offer us semantic reassurances about IHL and protection of civilians. We need you to honor these norms, honor these norms, not recall them only to justify their breach seconds later. This selective outrage is outrageous and needs to stop and need to stop now. These people you watch in your screens for a few minutes a day, every night, while they are being slaughtered, they have survived decades of military occupation, a 16 years long blockade and five wars in the Gaza Strip. They built and rebuilt and rebuilt their lives and their homes again and again against all odds, despite tremendous suffering. They are walking miracles. How could you leave them to be killed once again? The answer to the killing of Palestinian civilians is not the killing of Israeli civilians. And the answer to the killing of Israeli civilians is not the killing of Palestinian civilians. Vengeance is a dead end. The only path forward is justice. The only path forward is justice. Justice for the Palestinian people. Don't distort the law. Don't bend it. Don't break it. Don't betray it to accommodate Israel. Uphold it and uphold it high. This is what we are here for as a United Nations, to save future generations from the scourge of war. Uphold it for the sake of all nations, for the credibility of these United Nations. Mr. President, Wael al-Dahdouh was reporting on the massacres in Gaza. For those of you who do not, who is Wael al-Dahdouh, he is the field uh, correspondent of Al Jazeera in the Gaza Strip. As he's been doing relentlessly for days now, when he received the news of an Israeli airstrike that killed his wife, his son, and his daughter, He'd, he did something many parents do in these circumstances. He spoke to his son, waiting for an answer that never came. He told him, didn't you tell me you wanted to be a journalist? His son wanted to be a journalist, even though journalists are targets in Palestine. Remember Sharina Ba'akli? Now, the dream of the son will haunt the father. Wael said a few words that I want you to hear well. He said, they took their vengeance out on our children. He then said in a heartbreaking voice, Malish, allow me to explain explain it to you. Literally, it means that's okay. But let me tell you what I believe he meant. Let me do it in Arabic. Shame on this reality where Gaza is being slaughtered again. Shame to on those who do not have respect to our humanity, our dignity, our suffering. Shame on those who justify the acts of the criminal, all those who stand by the predator or justify 
or gave condolence to the victim, explaining that the killer is not responsible. Shame on those who abandoned our people as we are reeling under these massacres. Shame if a word of truth is not uttered. Shame if I leave the field to rather than defending our people, innocent people. God is our rock, and he is the dispenser of all affairs. Finally, I appeal to all of you, vote to stop the killing. Vote for humanitarian aid to reach those whose very survival depends on it. Vote to stop this madness. You have a chance to do something, to give an important signal. Choose justice, not vengeance. Choose to defend the law, not justify its breach. Choose peace, not more wars. Vote to put an end to two, almost three weeks of the worst double standards we have seen in decades. To restore some credibility of this place and the rules it is supposed to embody. Do not miss this chance. Lives are hanging in the balance, and every life is sacred. Please save lives, save lives, save lives. Vote for our draft resolution, and I thank you. Watching Al Jazeera will bring you coverage of a General Assembly emergency special session on the protection of the Palestinian civilian population. That was the Palestinian ambassador to the United Nations, Riyadh Mansour, giving a very strong and powerful speech there, uh, telling emotional stories of describing the lives of people in Gaza, his voice breaking, as he told, of 7,000 Palestinians killed since October the 7th. 70% of them, he said, were women and children. He said, these are crimes, this is barbarism. Stop it, he said, for all those lives we can still save. He